Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now by 2009, Gigabyte were no strangers to passively called graphics cards, having already released a fanless AMD 4850. Of course, by just removing the fan from a warm mid-range GPU like this wouldn't have been a very good idea. So the 9800 GT Silent Cell here features a large custom cooler that looks good and hopefully ensures that performance isn't compromised in favor of silence. I need to get something out of the way though, this has nothing to do with the performance or anything like that, but I do not like one bit how the cooler sounds when you touch it. I know that sounds really random, but just listen to these noises. Yeah, I, I really do not like that. I felt like I needed to mention it. Um, the texture and noise of this heatsink is not good and the card does not feel nice to handle, but I guess it's pretty irrelevant once it's inside your case. Speaking of which, let's get this thing inside the case and see if it actually stays cool during gameplay. Now I've squeezed this one gigabyte graphics card into a pretty cramped enclosure with a single rear exhaust fan for the sake of a near worst case scenario experience. There's not much breathing room in here and that is what a passively cooled card really needs so that it doesn't turn into a portable barbecue. The card idles at 41 degrees which isn't too bad but the real test is what happens when we fire up a handful of games. Just how much will it suffer? First up it's Crisis running at 1080p with the medium settings and anti-aliasing off. Performance wise the car did okay, though the temperature shot straight up to at least 60 degrees before the game had even loaded. Thankfully this number didn't really get much higher. And it turns out that the maximum recorded temperature for the Silent Cell 9800 GT was 75 degrees. This was the highest figure recorded by MSI Afterburner, which was running in the background throughout the entirety of my gaming session today. There were some drops to the low 30s here in Crisis, but medium settings seem to be the best option graphics wise, and it's advisable to keep AA off. Still, we've got no barbecues thus far, which is always good. I've got some figures from CSGO here as well. I realized afterwards that I didn't have the overlay enabled for the recording. You can still enable it through Steam um, because it's disabled by default these days, but what an idiot I am. I do, however, have the exact recorded average and percentile figures which came back as 61, 27 and 15 respectively. This was at 1080p so 60fps is doable though there will be some drops due to the age of the card. CSGO is a more CPU intensive game though. Fallout New Vegas can be pretty chaotic when uncapped so I left the default 60fps frame cap in place as it's tied to the physics of the game. Hitting 60fps at 1080p with 4x anti-aliasing is certainly possible even in and around New Vegas so there is nothing to worry about here. I always say that this game will probably run on almost anything, including ancient cards like this one. Again the temperature gets up to around the mid 60s which is pretty reasonable considering. I read an article somewhere, I can't remember where, it's one of those things that you find and then you can never find them again, uh, but actually it said that this card ran cooler than a standard 9800 GT with a fan during their tests if you can believe it, and honestly that doesn't seem too unlikely. To maintain a steady frame rate in Grand Theft Auto 5, we had to use 720p resolution and turn everything down to normal. The game is therefore running at its absolute lowest here, though we didn't have to go as low as 800 by 600 which was a relief. The Vinewood Hills area of the game is more demanding than the centre of the city, so overall the frame rate was hovering from anywhere around 30fps all the way up to 60fps and sometimes beyond that, especially as you get into the countryside. I'll have to try and find a second one of these and put together a retro SLI no fan setup. Finally, the absolute classic that is Far Cry 2 really brought out the smell of burning. This game is famous for its realistic fire, and now you can get the smell to go with 
the visuals. This is where the card got up to around 75 degrees once again, but it's not too bad considering that we have no traditional cooling, but I'm not joking about the slight burning smell, that really was happening. This card certainly relies on what sort of case cooling you have, and the more fans inside your enclosure, the better. These days though, well, it's a card that you're probably not going to want to use if you want to run modern games because DirectX 11 isn't supported, but it's a nice unique card to have as part of your collection, and this will probably be one that I keep around for a while. Now overclocking, I should briefly mention, is a big no-no to be fair, which is probably why the card shares the same clock speeds as the reference model, but anyone back in the day who was looking for 9800 GT mid-range performance and also wanted a quiet system because some of those cards could get loud, well, they find a pretty good gaming experience within this thing. So yeah, I've certainly had fun testing it and I'm sure that many owners of this card over time have had their fair share of fun as well. All that's left to say is then thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed this one leave a like on it, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.